Well, I'm hosting, and that's weird. But what's not weird is the, our content, and it's Gateman Post Game <laughs> Live. Once again, live from Doran Park as the Gateman walk away with a victory 3-2 to two here tonight. And it was an interesting one. There was a lot of things that happened that we haven't necessarily been accustomed to seeing, a lot of opposite field approaches and pitchers who aren't starters starting and all this kind of stuff. And overall, that pitcher who normally isn't a starter here for the Gateman season, Ryan Wilson, made his first start this summer and looked really good. Yeah, Wilson was terrific uh, for the game in here tonight. Did a terrific job of mixing up his fastball, his curveball, and his slider. And his curveball and slider really didn't come around to the fourth or fifth inning. But when he needed a strike in in those innings, he got it, specifically in the bottom of the fourth, when two errors by game and infielders put runners on the corners and one out. But he uses a, cur a huge curveball um, to strike out a batter for the second out of the inning and then induces a 4-3 to get out of the jam. And then overall, only through 72 pitches over five innings, which is pretty good for, so who someone, for someone who does not usually need to stretch himself out when he knows he's only going to go out there for two or three innings. So overall, Ryan Olsen, very impressive tonight. And for a team that's going to lose a fair amount of pitching due to innings limits, he's definitely someone who could turn into a regular starter for this Gateman team. And Jake, you mentioned this on the broadcast. The metaphor of the Gateman's ownage of the Bourne Braves this season has been get enough offense to win. And that's something they did again tonight. What did you see out of the offensive unit tonight? I saw a really well-rounded approach. Two of the three runs that were batted in were hits to the opposite field. And we've hammered this home so much on the broadcast, but it's really held true. This team tends to perform better when they're working to all fields and not necessarily flying their front shoulder open and trying to yank the ball out of the ballpark. They've proven they can do that definitely this year, but that also leads to a lot of streaky play. This team is much more grounded. They're much more systematic in their offensive approach when they're trying to work gap to gap because the home runs are then going to come. This team has enough pop to do that, but when they're just sprinkling in these doubles to the opposite field. Singles as well. We saw Sheets with one of them tonight go the opposite way. It's it's a more well-rounded offensive attack for them, and it's one that's probably going to be more sustainable against, against better pitching, especially when the playoffs roll, ar roll around. Um, but we saw Sheets go the opposite way. We saw Destino go the opposite way. And then, obviously, the power that Sheets showcased on his sacrifice fly that was down the right field line right around the 360 area. Just crushed, probably gone at eight, nine other ballparks here on the Cape, but not here at Doran Park because it's 360 down the line. But I really like the well-rounded offensive attack for Wareham tonight. I think my biggest takeaway from tonight is that this Gateman pitching staff is doing a lot better at minimizing the damage. So often earlier in this year, especially in that 05 and 07 stretch, they just couldn't get out of their own way. And they'd get to two outs, and then it would snowball, and two, three more runs would score. And so now there's, we're seeing the ability for them to be able to really shut the door at this point, and Jake Mathis gives up the one run that really didn't mean anything in this one, and then shut the door. Uh, Nick Sprengel gave up one run, shut the door after that. So it just kind of seems like this pitching staff as a whole is getting a lot better at stopping the damage, which I think is nice. And now, Matt Feld, you warned us before we started filming this that you have a screeching hot take, and I'm curious what that is. My hot take is threefold. <laughs> And my first takeaway that is not screeching is that, well, kind of screeching, is that Gavin Sheets somewhat looks more comfortable in right field than at first base. And that is no disrespect to his play at first base. Obviously, uh, well known for his first base play, both in the field and at the plate at Wake Forest in a very competitive ACC. But tonight in right field, comes up throwing, makes a terrific throw to Nico Giratano for the, second, for the final and third out of the inning to stop the bleeding, as you mentioned earlier, Andre. And so overall, it looks like Gavin looks a little more relaxed out there and just seems to be free and easy while well at first base. The pressure might be starting to mount up. He's obviously had a tough time scooping some balls out of the dirt as we have some nonsense going on behind me. <laughs> My second take is is an interesting interaction that happened after the game. I was offered a free bag of Skittles, and when I turned to assistant coach <laughs> Bob Prince, if he wanted some, he goes, no, I have a bad knee. <laughs> and that really makes no sense to me. He said he just needed to come up with a justification. And finally... I must say, I do not. This, is, this is a screeching take at, at coming up right here. I hate the moths at Splain Field. There are about 10,000 of them, but I've come to respect them a little bit more considering we're right now in a swarm of mosquitoes. <laughs> I will take the moths over the mosquitoes any day. You also have a threefold hot take tonight. I do, but I don't think there's any way I remember all three of my takes by the time <laughs> I'm done talking about my first few. So I'll start with the one that is probably the most important and the most baseball related, and that's that Nico Giratano at shortstop has started to swing the bat incredibly well, uh, especially from the left side here as of late. He obviously gets way more at-bats left-handed than he does right-handed, 
facing more right-handed pitching, but he's looked more comfortable and more comfortable with each 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 passing day as we get con- people continuing to scream at us in the background. So it's hard to p- pay attention. But we hypothesized at the start of the season and kind of wondered aloud if either Grand Prix or Giratano would separate themselves offensively. The duo at shortstop that's been switching off every day. Right now it's Giratano pulling ahead. He's going to be above 200 after this performance. Had another knock tonight, a pair of walks. He looks great. Looks really comfortable offensively right now. My second tick, as I'm trying to remember it. Oh, yes. Again, three people on the postgame show tonight. Jacob Toby on assignment. I believe I'm the only one who has yet to miss a postgame show because, Matt, if I recall correctly, you weren't on the first that's accurate. I would like to know that I've missed one game, but we did not have a post-game show at that time. So I remain the only one with perfect attendance. I was awarded something back in elementary school for that, and I'll award myself with another thing at the end of the season. <laughs> Third and final take, as I'm trying, sitting here to remember. Oh, yeah, uh, Andrew Shapps for Bourne tonight. This is just a subtle plug for Arizona State baseball, but it's good to see the first Sun Devil out here on the Cape. Before him, there weren't any this season, and that was a little bit concerning if you're Tracy Smith and company wanting to see your guys performing at the highest level this summer, losing a ton to the MLB draft this year, and to see someone from ASU out here on the Cape, aside from just broadcasters, because we know there are 500 of us, it was it was good. He may or may not have looked comfortable offensively tonight. He didn't, but at least he put together uh, a, a quality at bat in his last time up. I have three takes. My first one I just thought of, and that is I hope our lighting is still good at this point because of the fact that we are getting the lights turned off on us. The second one is I I think this game team is starting to have fun again. It's it's no fun losing. Everyone knows that. But the way that they were losing games was oh just – and we are absolutely done. <laughs> Go, keep going. Keep going keep and going. <laughs> the way that – this team was losing in the 05 and 2 stretch was just demoralizing. It was just not a pleasant sight to see as a broadcaster, and I'm sure it wasn't any fun to play in. So that is good. And then also, I think I actually forgot my second take because of the fact of the, like, the lights turning off, but I'll stick with this team having fun because I think that's a good thing. But we'll end it right there just on the count of the fact that we don't have any lights right now, and I'm really curious what this camera's picking up. I'll send this out with thank you for watching, and please visit jakemgarcia.com.